What is going on, everyone? I am Mike. Welcome back to Tech 24-7 TV. I am so glad that you are here today because I am excited to unbox the AirPods Max. Now, this is Apple's attempt at blending high fidelity audio with, I would say, the ease and frictionless using of AirPods. And it's a pretty ambitious attempt, if I say so myself, $549. And they're really, I mean, they're certainly premium. Uh, the question is whether they're not worth paying $549. Let's get right into the unboxing. Now, as we get into the unboxing, there are a few key technologies that Apple is promoting slash highlighting at what makes the AirPods Max special. So there is a unique Apple designed dynamic driver that sits inside of the ear cup, obviously, but these drivers are not like most drivers that you see that are actually kind of closer to the ear. They're gonna be farther actually into the ear cup, allowing for better placement. And if you look inside when we, when we get through the ear cups, the ear cups are rounded rectangle in shape, which means that this should fit a lot more people's ears. Now I know with some of the headphones that I own, like the Sony MX3s, my Beats Studio 4s, they fit differently so you are more easily get ear fatigue when you're using one of these headphones because if you look at these these are you know they're just round in nature and there's nothing wrong with that but they don't necessarily have a broad fit to them where uh, with these they should actually not contribute to ear fatigue as quickly that's not to say that you won't get it because these are heavy and that ear fatigue uh, is going to be real here there is active noise cancellation, there's transparency mode, there's adaptive EQ, which uses the nine different uh, microphones that are around and inside of the uh, ear cups to go ahead and balance the audio so it's optimal. Now, each one of these headphones has an H1 chip with inside of it, which is actually kind of unique because if you have AirPods Pro, those have a single H1 chip and that single H1 chip is only using one core for each of the headphones. Now, this actually has one H1 chip per ear cup, and it's using all the cores. So it's actually kind of unique in that aspect. Now, additionally, what these also have is that inside of each ear cup, there's an optical sensor, there is a positioning sensor. Uh, these will be able to go ahead and understand if they are on your head. So whether that you actually, when you put them on and when you take them off uh, to auto start and stop any content that you're listening to. There's an accelerometer in each ear. So as you kind of move your head in space, uh, not like outer space, but space in terms of positioning uh, and a gyroscope to figure out which way you're turning your head. Uh, that also plays into the spatial audio that this has. Now that we have these bad boys unwrapped, let's see what is inside the box. <gasps> the angels sing. Okay, so here we have, uh, this is the first look. Okay, yeah, look, it looks like a purse or a brassiere. These are extremely heavy, dense. I would say dense for sure. Put that to the side and let's see what's actually inside of the box. As for what's inside the box, nothing special. All we have are some safety and handling guidelines, quick start guide and a lightning to USB-C cable. This is quite the weird packaging. Let's go ahead and open this up. This kind of protective layer. Wow, this is, this is almost like an eye mask. Weird, right? Now, just picking these up, these are very, very heavy. Um, it's interesting, this, this motion. That, so you can only have the ear cups turned this way, and that means they're only gonna fit inside this case. You can't actually rotate them uh, 180 degrees. One thing I just heard, I heard my ring scrape against this here. So obviously if you are <laughs> concerned about the, uh, the finish on these, you might wanna maybe stick with a lighter color. Not that I have a scratch on it already, but I don't know if this is a piston or I don't know what you'd call this design. It looks like a piston, but I think maybe it's called something different. This is quite, quite interesting. Now let's see if I can get this on my head. Just for a, just for a fit. Ooh, that's interesting. So uh, the top of my, it's the, the top of the canopy is actually, if you look at it, sitting right on the brim of my hat. So I don't necessarily get a, a good fit unless I tip them just a little bit back. So that's just kind of a FYI if you wear hats all the time like I do. Now, I would say it fits good. I'm, 
I'm not getting too much pressure. I think my hat's helping that though because it's kind of uh, suspending these a little bit higher than what they normally would. Now let's go ahead and pair this with my phone. The first thing we wanna to do to pair our AirPods Max to our device is go to the home screen. Now, if your AirPods Max are not already out of the case or the brassiere we like to call them, go ahead and do so and then hold them next to your device. You should get a setup animation that prompts you to go ahead and start pairing your device. If you don't see that, you can hold down the noise control button, which is that rectangular button right next to the digital crown. Once you go ahead and hold that, you're gonna get the prompt to say to go on and pair to AirPod Max. For our first test, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a FaceTime video call from my Mac to my phone, right? And my headphones are connected to my Mac so we can get an idea of what the audio quality sounds like while you're using these devices. Now, I still am recording from this microphone right now, but let's go ahead and make that FaceTime call. Oh, you should be hearing the audio coming from my headphones as opposed to from this microphone or even the microphone here because I have this muted. Now, right now, what you are hearing is my audio coming from the headphones and you're not getting feedback from either this microphone or from on my phone because I've muted both of those microphones. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do so you can get a better idea is I'm going to go ahead and turn on this uh, hair dryer, which is not mine. Obviously, I shaved my head. It's my wife's. But let's go ahead and get an idea what the noise canceling sounds like. Okay, so now it's, it's loud in here. Uh, I have this turned on. It's going to just kind of wave it at my head like it's a windy day here. And so now you should get an idea of what the noise canceling sounds like while talking on AirPods Max. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Now that we've wrapped up the audio quality test on how, what it would sound like if you were using this to make calls, uh, whether it's you know on voice or video, uh, I, we're gonna even some, do some sound comparisons. Now, again, this is gonna be kind of hard for me to share this with you only because, well, one, you can't hear the music because you don't have the headphones on. That's obviously the real hard part. Uh, that would be cool if we could solve that problem. But two, you know, there's different styles of music. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and use Tidal as the type of content or the content library where it's coming from. And I've really just selected an eclectic use or eclectic catalog of music. I like all different types of music. So we're gonna open up Tidal. And uh, the very first song I'm gonna go ahead and play is People Are Strange. Now, all of the uh, songs I'm listening to are gonna be what they call master quality, MQA master quality audio. So they're the highest bit rate audio that are available. And what I'm judging this by is just the clarity and the breadth of uh, different instruments or different notes I can hear within that. Now, again, I'm not claiming I'm an audiophile, but I do have, I think, what, what I would consider a pretty good understanding of of what good audio sounds like. Uh, but I'm not the type of person who would spend several thousand dollars on speakers, but that's just kind of how I would uh, uh, evaluate myself. So people are strange. Jim Morrison rocks. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Sounds really good. Very, um, very wide sounding, the soundstage. Hear the drums and the organs. Yes, that, that sounds really good. I stopped the track, so it sounds very, very good. It's kind of hard to articulate, but each uh, there's not a lot of muddying between his vocal track and the uh, and the instruments that are being played. So that's uh, what I would how I would describe that. Now let's see here. Um, I am going to go from the doors. We're gonna to go to the kinks, you really got me. Yeah. The guitar sound great. So you really got me thinking this sounds really good. Uh, I could say that for sure. That sounds really good. Now I'm gonna to go to something a little bit different. Um, I like, again, very many different types of music. I'm gonna to go to some hip hop. Uh, hip hop, hip hop a lot of us. I'm gonna to go to hypnotize. Oh. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Sounds really good. So what I think is really cool is that you get the, um, you're able to hear, at least in, in my uh, in my evaluation, you're able to hear things that were not previously kind of audible to you or maybe not present because the breadth of 
uh, of, of dynamics, you know, the, the lowest lows and the highest highs are very clear. That's how I would describe this. Let's try, I, don't, I want something other than another Notorious B.I.G. who happens to be the best lyricist ever. And if you don't agree with me, then I really don't care. Uh, let's see. Okay, here is Seven Nation Army by The White Stripes. Do the guitar riff is just boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, so the various forms of music, right? I got some rock and roll. I have some, uh, hip hop. Let's see. What else can we find? Oh, um, come together, take five, which is Ringo Starr singing the, uh, the lead vocals. Such a badass track. Such, such a badass track. I don't know all the words. No shame. Sounds good as well. And so I think here is the thing that I want to underscore. All of the audio that you're going to get for streaming from this, it's going to come from, you know, mostly iTunes. If you're listening to audio that is going to be uh, on your iOS device from Tidal, everything's going to be encoded in AAC. So unless you're using the desktop application where this is going to be MQA, everything's going to be included, encoded in AAC. And AAC is Apple's, uh, the it's a lossless audio codec. For the most part, you're always going to get 250 kilobits per second unless you are connected to cellular on your phone. Uh, and then it's going to be at a lower bit rate. That is unless you go into the application and say that you always want high fidelity or high quality streaming, uh, then it's going to kick that up no matter the type of uh, error interface you're on or no matter whether you're on cellular or Wi-Fi. So that is the big thing here. So for most people, these headphones are going to sound very good. If you are someone who is using these headphones and you're an audiophile, it's going to leave a little bit uh, I say you want, it's going to leave you wanting a little bit because obviously the DAC that's in here is not designed or not engineered to be an all around DAC for high quality audio. You know, this is not audio that is 320 kilobits uh, and higher. It's something that is, it's going to meet the needs of the majority of people, not kind of the smaller minority of people that want the high quality audio. So I would say that in terms of these headphones and how they sound, I think they absolutely sound great. They're really, really good all around headphones. They're built for uh, the, the masses. You know, they're built to be all around or great all around headphones. Whether you're listening to podcasts, you know, music, high quality music in, in air quotes. Uh, even if you're editing audio, like I use these with the 3.5 millimeter jack, which is right here. And the latency was acceptable to me. So in terms of battery usage, I can tell you that I've been using these headphones for about the past three days, and every day it's about three to four hours. So I may have it either connected to my Mac, to my iPhone, to my iPad, and I'm getting somewhere in the neighborhood of about 15% usage out of that. So, you know, I started at 100. By the end of those three or four hours, I'm somewhere in the neighborhood of like 80 to 85. So it's not bad. And the battery drain, when you don't have them in the charging case, because I think the charging case is dumb, uh, is not that, you know, not that significant in my experience. Everyone is comparing these headphones to the Sony uh, MX3s, MX4s. These are the MX3s. Uh, the MX4s, in my opinion, didn't offer a significant upgrade over the threes, which is why I didn't purchase them. Um, but if Apple can deliver these headphones for $549, I think that Sony has been under delivering at $350 what they have been giving us. Uh, think about the the audio quality experience, but the manufacturing and the design experience and the and the uh, the aesthetic experience of those headphones is a little underwhelming. So I think what we'll see next year from Sony are headphones, you know, the MX-5s, and they're going to be much more, uh, they use much better materials than they do today, and they'll have a, a richer feel to them. Whether that price point stay the same or not, that's going to be, you know, interesting to see. So that's what I would suggest. If you are looking to get these headphones, they are not something for people who are, would consider themselves audiophiles because of the lack of applicability with getting kind of that high quality music, you know, uh, iTunes or iOS does not support FLAC or ALAC, which is uh, uh, a very high quality lossless format. And unfortunately, that's not what, uh, uh, that's what, not what they're designed for. They're designed to build and deliver an optimal experience for the majority of people across a number of different applications. If you have 
you know, a very small number of applications where you're expecting high quality audio, this is not those uh, these headphones for you. In terms of build quality, these are certainly heavy. So as I mentioned in the beginning, you might experience ear fatigue at some point, uh, not necessarily from wearing them uh, like pressure on your ears, but just kind of overall weight. You don't necessarily notice the weight while sitting here listening to music, but if you think you're gonna walk around <laughs> or try working out with these headphones, you're definitely gonna have trouble. I would not suggest using these headphones uh, while working out just because they're so heavy and they are not waterproof at all. The one thing that I just don't necessarily agree with it, I gotta pay $35 for this 3.5 millimeter to lightning cable. That to me is a ripoff. Then I think that just underscores that Apple believes most people will use these via Bluetooth. For me, when I'm editing video, I wanna go ahead and use, uh, I wanna be as close uh, proximity to the audio as possible, and that's why I need this cable. Um, otherwise, it, that's not, uh, it's not really needed for you unless you think that you have that some kind of unique use case. I can tell you that I have not found a way to use the headphones connected via cable. Uh, to like an iPad, like a lightning iPad, unless you're using this breakout adapter, which is a, like a USB-C or lightning to 3.5 millimeter jack. You have to use one of these if you wanna use it with your iPhone or a USB-C iPad. So that is a little bit of a bummer. I wish there was another way to go ahead and get around that. Uh, if you are someone who thinks that you can get better value uh, out of uh, a, lower, a lower cost headset, I certainly agree with you that you'll probably find better value. Uh, if you think you're looking for the uh, headphones that offer better performance uh, that are either somewhere in the same neighborhood. You know, these are probably, I would say, mid-tier for audiophile headphones in terms of cost. But if you were looking at for something that's, you know, several hundred dollars, uh, these are, uh, or those headphones will probably outperform them uh, because of the, the very specific or niche use cases that you're getting from them. If you are thinking about picking up these headphones for yourself or for a loved one as a gift, whatever the case is, these headphones are really gonna knock it out of the park in my opinion because they fit the majority of use cases, right? They provide enjoyable experience. And for what you're getting in terms of the frictionless usage or the frictionless um, ability to connect it from one device to the other, the transparency mode, which is bananas, uh, they sound really great and I think it's a good value. Now, what I can say, it's, it's a lot like the HomePod where if you think that the HomePod offers a great experience and that experience is enjoyable, right? That's the word enjoyable. And you don't mind spending the money for the HomePod. It, this is the same thing. You're going to like these headphones. They're going to sound good. They're going to be applicable uh, to all of, you know, all of, if not the majority of your use cases. I would uh, consider definitely uh, buying them. I think I'm going to keep these uh, at this point. I enjoy them. The only thing where I'm probably not sure whether I'm going to keep them is where, like many of you, I am at home for most of my days. So having over the ear uh, closed back headphones is not necessarily a, a requirement for what I do. I, I have three other pair of headphones at my desk. I got power beats. I have these AirPods. I know these are Gen 1 or Gen 2. I have a uh, AirPods Pro. So I don't necessarily need all those uh, devices, but all around $549, I think that this is going to fit a broad number of use cases for people. You know, they're going to sound good broadly across applications, many different, you know, uh, music types. The sound signature is very good. They've got a good fit. Uh, and I think that if you don't mind spending the $549, you will not be disappointed. But I would love to know what you think about these headphones. Let me know in the comments below. I am Mike. This is Tech 24-7 TV. Hope you have a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next video.